All right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench. Today we're gonna to learn about mysterious plastic boxes that are under your hood, otherwise known as relays, and uh, what they are all about. And in order to learn that, we are also going to delve into what Faraday's Law of Induction is, which is super important to lots of car parts. So, stay tuned. So what does a relay look like? Well, they can be in different colors. They're always gonna be plastic. They like to hang out in fuse panels and anywhere where there's fuses. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, check the other video, the first episode of How to Become a Gearhead. Um, and they, when you take them out of the fuse panel, or if they're already out, they've got some um, pins sticking out. And there's usually four, could be five, could be even a little more, but usually they're four and five. Now, that's one version of a relay. There's an example of another one, and yet another one for reference. So they all look about the same, but the colors are different. Now the colors might actually mean something like uh, different amperages that they can handle, or manufacturers, but um, for color, not really needed. And uh, so just remember, relays can be any different kind of colors. And here's yet even a different type of relay. It's bigger, it's got two built in one, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And technically this is a relay. It's actually called a solenoid, and it's for our starter motor, which we'll talk about a little later, but uh, this is also considered a relay. It works exactly the same. Now that we know what a relay looks like, where do they live? Well, relays like to live together and they enjoy the company of fuses. So once you pop open your fuse panel lid, you will find them sitting there. And uh, like I said, they look like black, or different colored plastic mysterious boxes. So there's one, two, three of them in this fuse panel. And in this car, uh, there's another fuse panel underneath the dash and there's a bunch of more relays in there. Now, what is a relay? What's its job? What makes it happy? Well, a relay, in simple terms, is an electrically controlled switch. So much like an on-off switch in your house, except that you could actually turn it on and off remotely by using a little bit of electricity. And a little bit more understanding of a relay would be that it's an electrically controlled switch that I can use a little bit of current to turn on a larger amount of current. Or a little bit of electricity to turn on something that needs a lot more electricity. So looking at this, you can see that there are four pinouts. Uh, there could be five, but we're gonna just start with four. So the four, if you notice, there's actually two different sizes. So the little silver ones are a little bit thinner and the copper ones are a little bit thicker. So there's color and shape of those terminals. And this gives you a little hint. So I just told you that a little bit of electricity turns on a bigger amount of electricity. So if you had to guess and figure out off of that theory, which terminals are which, you would have to agree with me that the little terminals right here would be supplying a little bit of electricity to turn on the larger amount of electricity on that circuit. Okay, next logical question is why do our cars have this? Why do we actually need this? Why can't I just use my switch in my dash and turn things on and off? Well, to put it simply, car manufacturers want to build a vehicle as cheap as possible. And so instead of having heavy gauge wires running up into the dash and using high amperage capable and very expensive switches, um, they can actually use thinner wires, they can run them longer distances, and they can use um, smaller amperage switches and controls that um, cost a lot less to manufacture. And then the ben side benefit of that is that we don't have massive thick wires, hundreds of them coming up into the dash, going to massive gaudy bulk bulky switches under the dash. So we have a more confined, more elegant system. Okay, how do we test one of these relays to know if we have a good relay or a bad relay? Uh, well, I could just show you, but the uh, most logical thing for me to do is to delve into a little physics concept called Faraday's Law of Induction. And um, through learning that, you will really, really understand how these relays work and plus a whole bunch of other car parts. So let's delve into that. All right, brace yourselves because it's time to geek out with Dr. J a little bit and learn some physics. So. Faraday's law of induction states that anytime you put electricity through a wire, you get a magnetic field. Now, if you take that wire and you wrap it really tightly in a bunch of coils around a piece of steel, in this case it's just a bolt, and it comes off, if we put electricity through a coil of wire, we get a magnetic field. That is the Faraday's law of induction. Now, I like physics concepts because once you know them, the other thing about them, usually they're reversible. So if we stick a magnet and we run it by a coil of wires, we get electricity. 
we get that magnetism induced into the coil of wire, creating electricity. To prove Faraday's law of induction actually works, I've taken our coil of wire and I've hooked it up to a black negative terminal and a red positive terminal of a power supply. And uh, according to Faraday's law, when electricity flows through a coil of wire, we get a magnetic field. And so I've got two steel washers here, and uh, if something happens, we'll be able to see that. So when you hear start, I've turned on the power. Start. So you can see there's quite a bit of power, uh, and there's not even all that many coils. But um, the strength of that magnetic field happens because of how many coils you have or the amount of electricity flowing through there. Okay, so now that we know we can use Faraday's law of induction to make an electromagnet, uh, here's a little bit more of how a relay works. So if we have our little bit of electricity coming in, wrapping it on a coil, making a magnetic field, and then we've got our larger uh, amperage electricity circuit that we want to power when we do that. So we've got those two terminals coming out. And then inside, we're gonna have a little spring that normally holds a metal contact away or disconnected. So there's an open in the circuit, so electricity does not go through. And then as soon as we flip the switch, with power on, we've made our electromagnet. There's enough magnetism to pull that little metal contact down, which now connects the circuit, allowing electricity to go to our larger uh, amperage circuit. As soon as you kill the power, the spring pushes the contact off because there's no electromagnetic field anymore and we break or shut off that circuit. And before we say goodbye to Faraday and his law of induction, uh, I thought I would also show the reverse of that concept. So, if we put electricity through a coil of wire, we get a magnetic field. Well, if we also put a magnet or an electromagnet and run it by a coil of wires, we can induce an electrical current. So. I've got a multimeter hooked up to our coil, set it up to a pretty small voltage because we're not going to get too much here. And uh, here's your regular little fridge magnet and um, it has to be moving. So if I just put it like this, you see a little burst there, but there's not much happening. So if I can go like this and just about get an, a volt. So the ways of increasing the amount of electricity I induce in there is the closer I can get the magnet to the wire, the amount of wraps on the wire, the speed at which the, the magnet goes through, and then the other big one is the strength of the magnet itself. So here's a larger magnet. Let's see what uh, kind of voltages I can pull off this. So quite a bit more. Right, some of you are probably wondering why I'm focusing on Faraday's law so much. I came here to learn about relays, but the truth is Faraday's law is really important. It's the operating principle for about 20, 30 other things in your car, such as these. Okay, they're in our EVAP systems. Uh, this is a purge solenoid to suck up the unburnt gases coming from our charcoal canisters. Under this cover, we're gonna have four coilover plugs for our ignition system. They operate off Faraday's law. We've got alternators. They're even cooler. They get to use Faraday's law both ways. They put electricity through a coil of wire to make an electromagnet, and as that electromagnet flies past a permanent magnet, we induce electricity and uh, make electricity. That's what those are for. And then we've got electric motors, such as electric radiator fans. These work off the Faraday's Law principle as well. A little hard to see, but there is our starter solenoid attached to our starter for this car. That's running off of Faraday's Law. Remember, it's just a big relay. We've got our power door locks. This is the switch that's gonna operate a relay. And uh, when we're doing all four doors, opening or closing, we're doing that with a relay from this switch. All right, right here, we've got a coilover plug for my Tacoma truck that's gonna be operating on Faraday's law. This windshield wiper motor is gonna be operating off of Faraday's principles of law of induction, electric motors. This here's our ele electronic brake modulator for our ABS brakes. Inside there's solenoids that are operated off of Faraday's principle. All right, so I've got an automotive relay here that I have taken apart. I physically actually had to cut and break the case so that this lid comes off. These do not come off on regular relays. So I've taken this off so that we can see actually what's going on inside. So there is a coil of wire and there's actually two of them. So this relay can operate either two circuits or they could be wired differently so that only one circuit ever works at one time. So depending on what the switch is on, uh, you'd never have both on. So it just depends how these terminals are. Now, uh, this one here, positive goes to there. When I put power from my power supply, so on, off, on, off. You can see that little metal switch, that contact is going down and that's what's allowing the electricity to flow to the higher amperage circuit. 
Now I'm going to be really quiet so you guys can actually hear the clicking. It's very key. That clicking can be actually heard through the cover. So this is one of the methods of being able to test whether a relay is good. If you hear the clicking, chances are that relay is pretty good. Okay, well what if I don't have a power supply? Well, you can get access to a 9 volt battery. You can still do this check and test your relay if it's okay or not. So, uh, first thing you gotta do is figure out the combination of which two you have to hook this up to. Now, if you still remember and paid attention to the beginning of this video, uh, we know that a relay uses a little bit of electricity to operate a larger amount of electricity. So, remember these little skinny guys compared to these bigger terminals. So, I can pretty much assume that these are positive and negative. And what do you know? Click off. So this is a good relay. Right now technically your relay could click and it still might not be not good. So a uh, pretty final way of checking this is getting a multimeter, hooking it up to the higher amperage, bigger terminals on your relay, and then uh, setting your multimeter for a continuity. So we're looking for the little omega symbol, so we're checking resistance. And we don't have to have it very high, we can have it very low. And then Take your power supply or your 9-volt battery. So there's my clicking, and but you'll notice the multimeter goes pretty much almost down to zero. Take it off, goes over limiter one, back on, and we're good. So this is 100% a good relay. Remember this guy? He's a starter solenoid. Just like a relay inside though, it's just designed to have a little bit of electricity triggered on electromagnetic for a huge amount of amperage to go to our starter motor. So I've got it hooked up much like the relay we just tested. Big, large clunk inside. You can see that the continuity, it's pretty much a good connection across. So we turn the key in our car and we go to use that little cheap dinky low amperage switch to turn on our electricity. That electricity goes to the relay. Clunk. We have full connection of the battery right to the starter motor. Crank, 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 crank. Car starts and then we let it go and the starter motor stops and the car is running. Here we have a headlight circuit simplified with nothing else in the car, just looking at the wires themselves. So we've got our battery here simulated with a power supply. Positive voltage goes up to a fuse holder, inline fuse holder, which we talked about in our previous video. And then it continues on up into the dash, up into your dash where you have a headlight switch and you turn your headlight switch on. Now, the little bit of electricity goes through the relay goes to ground and triggers the power to turn on and allow electricity to continue down this circuit, gets split up into a parallel circuit, which we'll talk about in later videos, and then continue to our ground. When you shut your switch off, headlight switch off inside the car, we're actually killing the power to the electromagnet in here, which causes the spring to get pushed away from the push away the contact, which kills the power in the higher amperage circuit and um, shuts off your power. And here's a close-up. Keep an eye on this little contact right there. Whoo! Relays in action. All right, some of you might be thinking, uh, Dr. J, I'm at the side of the road. I have no tools. I don't have a power supply. I don't have a multimeter. How am I supposed to be able to check if a relay is gone and I can't get my car started? Well, first off, let's uh, take a gearhead lesson there. Why do you not have anything? Your car could easily have a $40, $50 generic toolkit and a $10, $15 electrical multimeter, and then you can start using this knowledge we're learning about to help get yourself out of trouble. Let's say you're stranded on the side of the road and your, your car won't start, and you think it possibly could be a relay, something you've learned about lately through my video series, and you want to try to check this out. So, pop your fuse panel, take a look underneath, and uh, through this drawing schematic or through your owner's manual, you figure out that you actually have a relay that is in charge of your starter, it says ST. So, you got a couple things. You can get your ear down here, and when the person tries to start the car, listen for some clicking. If it's clicking when you try to do the starter motor, or whatever circuit you're trying to diagnose, uh, you'll hear the clicking. Now, there's other relays that might be clicking on at the same time. So, another tip is to get yourself a screwdriver with a hard plastic handle, don't get a rubber one and um, put it on the part that you're trying to hear any noise out of and then put it right against your eardrum and then get someone to turn the key over and you'll very definitely feel the vibration and clicking all the way through the screwdriver up into your eardrum. 
Ah, it's a cool little trick to figure those out. And if it's clicking, then you know that it's not the relay that's not the issue and now you can move on to something else. If there is no ticking, then uh, good candidate to pop that out and uh, see if you have another starter that's the exact same one in your fuse panel. If you do, take a look if it's something crucial that needs to run on your car. Uh, it could be something like your horn or a radio or something like that, fog lights. And uh, if it's the exact same relay, you can switch them out temporarily and uh, get your car started and moving and, and then replace that other relay later. All right, so looking at my Toyota truck, I pop this off. Here are my relays. So you can see they're all a little different, different colors, different sizes. Uh, but something cool to note for uh, practical reasons, if you have something go wrong on your car, um, let's, for example, say that your car just all of a sudden dies. It uh, cranks but doesn't start, doesn't run, and uh, you're trying to think if maybe it's no spark. Well, look at your relays, figure out what's what. I have three relays that are exactly the same here, and they are for EFI, electronic fuel injection, power outlet, and tail light. Well, maybe one of those I don't need, and I can take it out and put it in the other one and confirm if it's working or not. Or if it does work, then uh, I can get the car going again and uh, go fix it at a later time. All right, that's a wrap on another episode of How to Become a Gearhead. Uh, now you've got some awesome theory and some cool practical tips to help you out uh, with any kind of relays or any kind of Faraday's law of induction stuff that you're going to have. Um, so if you have any questions about this episode, just put them down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, if you're enjoying the content, I'd love a subscribe and a like. All right, peace.